In this video about the artist Evelyn de Morgan, we will explore the life and work of this brilliant painter in great detail, so as to give you the viewer, a complete understanding of her greatest achievements. Before we proceed, we would ask that you be sure to stay till the very end of this documentary, so you can learn about how this creative genius and her husband allegedly became involved in a death cult, causing her to fall out of favor with the general public, thereby condemning her to obscurity forever. Evelyn de Morgan, was a visionary English painter who lived from 1855 till 1919. As a painter, she was associated early in her career with the later phase of the Pre-Raphaelite movement, and working in a range of styles including aestheticism and symbolism. Her paintings are figural, foregrounding the female body through the use of spiritual, mythological, and allegorical themes. They rely on a range of metaphors, such as light and darkness, transformation, and bondage, to express what several scholars have identified as spiritualist and feminist content. Her later works also dealt with the themes of war from a pacifist perspective, engaging with conflicts such as the Second Boer War and World War I. De Morgan was educated at home, and her mother insisted that, from the first, Evelyn was to profit from the same instruction as her brother. She studied Greek, Latin, French, German, and Italian, as well as classical literature and mythology, and was also exposed at a young age to history books and scientific texts. In a sophisticated poem entitled, My Love Lies Deep Below the Ground, written by de Morgan when she was in her early teens, she describes the grief of a young lover at her partner's death, but laces the stanza with hope of reunification in the spirit world aided by the angel of death. De Morgan painted her leitmotif in Love's Passing, 1883, almost twenty years after authoring her poem starring the Angel of Death. The cloaked Angel of Doom guides a lonely elderly woman to her death on the far bank of a river. In the foreground, we see her in her youth, listening to love songs with her companion. The couple's discarded book contains text from Tibullus Elegies, which depicts being so in love that one may suffer from early grief, the worry of their love fading and being alone. De Morgan was drawn to Botticelli's art and drew watercolor replicas of it. She appears to have placed a high value on Primavera and the birth of Venus, and they were undoubtedly the inspiration for her own masterpiece, Flora, 1894. The finery of the spring goddess is set amid a flowering field beneath the Italian summer light. De Morgan has gold painted her such that she really shines and lights the world around her. This work demonstrates not just her debt to Botticelli, but also her expertise in easel painting. Because of her thorough preparation of the canvas and thin paint layers, the enormous painting is still in perfect shape today. Evelyn depicts the narrative of a Greek myth in her 1896 painting Boreas and Orythia, but adds a unique twist to an otherwise difficult story. According to tradition, the deity of the North Wind, Boreas, was notorious for kidnapping the mortal princess Orythia. De Morgan decided not to depict Boreas as malevolent, instead depicting the couple in a loving embrace as Orythia obtains immortality and becomes Boreas' bride. She was drawn to literary and mythological themes, as well as feminine characters. She was also of the opinion that art should convey messages of peace and optimism. In the midst of the Boer War, she created the Storm Spirits in 1900. She symbolically captures the turmoil of battle in the painting while simultaneously ensuring that the image conveys hope. The figures of rain, thunder, and lightning, as portrayed by beautiful feminine spirits, do not appear to be particularly hostile, and we have the impression that tranquility will return once their tensions are released. Evelyn made several anti-war paintings during World War I, employing devils to depict conflict. She sold several of her paintings to help the Red Cross. Two ladies in the forefront of the vision, represent peace and purity. A menacing monster, a representation of violence and devastation, lurks behind them. The background depicts a dawn and calm waves, implying optimism. De Morgan created this painting in 1914, just before World War I began. 
Although De Morgan's paintings depict themes of love and non-violence, they are not always happy stories. Her work Queen Eleanor and Fair Rosamund presents a legendary 12th century narrative about King Henry II of England, his wife Eleanor of Aquitaine, and his lover Rosamund Clifford. Henry II was said to have had the lovely Rosamund as his mistress, whom he kept locked away in a labyrinth-like mansion. Despite Henry's efforts to safeguard his sweetheart, the envious Queen Eleanor navigated the labyrinth using a scarlet thread, where she allegedly poisoned Beauty Rosamund. The Queen is carrying a little vial of poison as well as the thread that led her through the maze in the artwork. Behind her, wicked dragons and monkeys may be seen. In contrast, there are winged cherubs and ghostly peace doves represented in the foreground. The Gilded Cage, one of Evelyn's paintings, depicts her feminism and desire for more female freedom. A young woman draped in a flowing gold robe stares wistfully out the window in the artwork. Despite her wealth, as seen by the diamonds and books she has discarded, the woman longs to be outside. Women were expected to stay out of the public eye and focus on their home life in Victorian culture. The theme is repeated by a canary in a gilded cage in the painting's upper right corner. Despite the fact that Evelyn de Morgan had escaped the restrictions of patriarchal Victorian society in many respects, she was still driven to paint about the issue. De Morgan and her husband William, were both spiritualists, and de Morgan's biographer, credits them as the anonymous authors of a 1909 publication of automatic writings, Communications with Spirit Beings, titled The Result of an Experiment. The introduction to this book describes the couple as practicing automatic writing together every night for many years of their marriage, and they were believed to have been involved in a type of death cult with other individuals, of the same persuasion. Since precious little primary material in Evelyn de Morgan's own hand has survived, this text provides important information on her faith and her approach to a range of issues, from her understanding of ultimate reality to her belief about the role of art in capturing spirit. From the moment that de Morgan encountered spiritualism, her perspective seemed to change, and her work started to reflect more ideas about darkness and death. De Morgan uses a range of motifs to represent spiritual ideas. A few examples are Renaissance angels, heavenly auras, a distinctive contrast between light and dark, and the symbolic use of colors. De Morgan uses complex allegories to depict her social commentary and spiritual beliefs. And the iconography in these works reflects several spiritual themes such as the progress of the spirit, the materialism of life on earth, and the imprisonment of the soul in the earthly body. If you're enjoying the content so far, I would really appreciate it if you could take a moment to subscribe to our channel. By subscribing, you'll be the first to know when we upload new videos, and you'll never miss out. Also, don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. It really helps out and lets us know that you're enjoying the content. And if you think this video would be helpful or entertaining for someone else, please share it with them. Finally, make sure to hit the notification bell so you never miss a new video. Hitting the bell ensures that you'll always be notified when we upload new content. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.